Do your eyes feel dry and irritated at the end of the day? Are they ever red or burning? Then the Complete Idiot's Guide to Contact Lenses is the book for you. Let's hear some testimonials from people like me who don't know the problem with use of contact lenses. My optometrist used to tell me all the time that I should only wear my contact lenses for two weeks. But honestly, I can't even remember what I ate for dinner last night, let alone when I opened my contact lenses. So I would just wear them and then throw them out when they started feeling uncomfortable. But the complete idiot's guide to contact lenses told me that I was being an idiot and I wasn't the only one. In the study on compliance of contact lens replacement in Canada and the U.S. in 2010, Dumbarton et al. found that 40% of Americans wore their lenses longer than what was recommended by the contact lens manufacturer. Bi-weekly and monthly contact lens wearers were, more, were less likely to be compliant compared to daily disposable wearers. While 78% reported that replacement on schedule was important, 25% of bi-weekly and 34% of monthly wearers reported they always replaced their lenses when recommended, compared to 82% of daily disposable wearers. Similar patterns of non-compliance are not only seen in the U.S. and Canada, but also in the U.K., Norway, and Australia. In a study by Boye et al. in Dallas, researchers found that while 86% of participants reported compliance, only 32% of them demonstrated good actual compliance in terms of proper lens management. The most common reason for non-compliance to replacement schedules for bi-weekly and monthly wearers was that they forgot which day to replace, while for daily disposable wearers, it was to save money. After reading The Complete Idiot's Guide to Contact Lenses, I got it together, and I started setting bi-weekly reminders on my phone, and now I throw my contact lenses out on time. I feel like a happier, healthier, and better person, and you can too! This was my contact lens case before. Ew, it's gross. But now look at my contact lens case. It's sparkling clean. That's because I read this book. Did you know that a study by Stapleton et al. found that poor case hygiene was found to be a risk factor for microbial keratitis? I didn't want car microbial keratitis, but yet I was unsure how to really keep this clean. So, then I kept reading, and I found that Wu et al. found that three methods significantly reduced the total bacterial biofilm of lens cases. These methods were rubbing and rinsing, soaking, in solution like this, and tissue wiping, which I do every single day. And I just learned that by Tantum et al, that silver impregnated cases. You know, I'm just some ordering some contacts online from 1 800 Contacts. You know, I have a question for you. Yeah? What's a base curve? Do you know what that is? Because they're asking me which base curve I want, and I think I'm just going to pick the bigger one. You know, they say bigger is better, so we'll see how this goes. Idiot. Idiot. Is, but do you know that a survey of college students by Fogel et al. found that those who purchased contact lenses at a doctor's office had higher percentage of following the FDA recommendation of proper contact lens rate, having the prescription filled properly, and getting an eye exam at least once a year than those who purchased over the internet. Regular eye exams are important for preventing contact lens related problems and also for instructions or for asking questions on proper contact lens handling and care. Oh, I know what I'm doing, totally. On the topic of unauthorized contact lenses, there's been an increase of purchases of cosmetic plano contact lenses from unlicensed vendors, both online and in convenience stores, resulting in ocular complications. In a retrospective case report, six people went to the emergency room for acute eye pain and redness after wearing cosmetic plano contact lenses. One patient even developed pseudomonal keratitis and required a penetrating keratoplasty. This is why I'm hot. This is why I'm hot. This is why. This is why. This is why I'm hot. I'm hot cause I'm fly. You ain't cause you not. This is why. This is why. This is why I'm hot. I'm hot cause I'm fly. You ain't cause you not. This is why. This is why. These are the purple ones you requested. Are these FDA approved? What's the FDA? Just try them on. Idiot. A study from Saudi Arabia in 2013 showed that while 82% of the participants are washing their hands before inserting the lenses, only 58% wash their hands before removing lenses. In addition, 
34% of the participants only immerse their lenses halfway in their lens case. And 7% of the participants rinse and rub. Chapter 35 taught me all I need to know about microbial keratitis. At first, I thought it was a spell from Harry Potter, but I was very wrong. So let me read you a couple of quick summaries of my favorite studies from this chapter. A cross-sectional study in 2010 found that the relative risk of developing ulcerative keratitis in contact lens wearers compared with non-wearers was 9.31. Based on other studies analyzing the data from the 1950s and the 1970s, there's without a doubt upward trend of ulcerative keratitis with contact lens wear. An Australian study split up the severity of microbial keratitis into three categories, severe microbial keratitis with vision loss, severe microbial keratitis without vision loss, and mild microbial keratitis. With this data, they found that there's a direct relationship between the severity of disease and the cost and duration of treatment. For instance, a mild microbial keratitis took an average of four days to treat, while a severe one took an average of 18 days to treat. Now my favorite study in this chapter from 2006 reviewed information from other contact lens with microbial keratitis studies and aimed to analyze the data collected. Now this diagram in red shows what is considered a microbial keratitis by each study applied to all the corneal infiltrative events of the Manchester keratitis study. Clearly, there's a lack of unified definition. They also found in the study that the risk of a corneal infiltrative event is greater in the superior cornea of patients wearing extended wear silicone hydrogel, the central cornea of patients wearing daily wear hydrogel daily disposables, and the peripheral cornea of patients wearing daily wear hydrogel. Thanks to the idiot's got complete guide to contact lenses, I now feel less like an idiot and more knowledgeable about my corporal keratitis. Have this ever happened to you? Do you fall into this category? A review of case series and case control studies show that there is greater odds that a person with contact lens associated microbial keratitis is of younger age, male, from a lower socioeconomic class, have poor hygiene and poor general health, and do not um, wash hand before handling lenses, wear lenses overnight, and swim with lenses on. Idiot. Chapter 7 has shown me that no contact lenses are FDA approved for swimming. In this book, I learned that Chu and all found that wearing contact lenses while swimming allows the accumulation of microbial organisms on the core of the lens. The most common organisms were Staph epidermidis and Staph aureus. Wu et al. further found that goggle wear consistently reduced the number of bacterial colonies on the contact lenses. Now I know to remove my contact lenses before going swimming, or to at least wear goggles like Michael Phelps. And another important fact that I learned is that not even chlorine can kill a panth amoeba. Now that I'm ready to go swimming, let me just put in my contact lenses. Idiot! I used to shower my contact lenses all the time. In fact, I used to swim in freshwater lakes in my contact lenses too. Panth amoeba keratitis is not a joke. It's painful and can lead to vision loss. AK has been a problem since the 1980s when people stored their lenses in homemade saline solution using tap water and salt tabs. But let's not talk about the time when I purchased a lifetime supply of AMO Complete Moisture Plus solution for pennies because it was recalled by the CDC. You know why? I can't amoeba keratitis. Then my optometrist recommended the Complete Idiot Guides to Contact Lenses. Did you know that 85% of AK cases is associated with soft contact lens use? Did you also know that the rate for AK is 0.2 out of 10,000 in the US and nearly 15 times greater in, in the UK? Well, I wish I knew that before I swam across the English Channel on my contact lenses. Now I have AK and I can't wear my contact lenses anymore. According to a study from Australia, the canth amoeba is not only resistant to most of the common disinfecting systems, including hydrogen peroxide, but they also adhere to, our, to the contact lens material and use it as a home until it infiltrates your cornea. A study from America also associated AK with herpes simplex keratitis, recent trauma, EKC, diabetic eye disease, basement membrane dystrophy, refractive surgery, dry eye, and rosacea. Yeah, my advice to you, purchase the complete idiot guides to contact lenses and don't be an idiot like I used to be. I love this book. It taught me so much. 
like a prevalent study done by Tariq said that sleeping in the people who are most likely to sleep in contact lenses are males, college students ages 18 to 25, and smokers. Also, people who are most likely to sleep in the contact lenses have been wearing them for over six years, like me. Another study done by Lind and Poles found that those who wear contact lenses over uh, overnight experience a change in epithelial barrier due to mechanical agitation of the debris that accumulates while sleeping. Once you wake up, the debris tra uh, the trapped debris isn't removed quickly enough, leading to further agitation. Now I don't ever sleep in my lenses anymore, and my eyes don't hurt in the morning. I also learned that another study found that uh, silicone hydrogel lenses were acute were as associated with a two-fold increase in corneal infiltrative events compared to regular hydrogel. That's because silicone hydrogels bind more microorganisms. I used to sleep in my contact lenses all the time, but now I don't do it anymore, ever. Oh my god, my contact lenses are making my eyes so tired. I think I'll just take a short nap. Idiot! Circle contact lenses are a very popular kind of cosmetic contact lens. They are known for the dramatic big eye effect and were popularized in Lady Gaga's Bad Romance video. Though circle contact lenses provide a nice cosmetic effect, there are some dangers to wearing these lenses. A case study done by Taku Al showed that circle lenses show up during MRI scans and interfere with image quality. This is due to the iron oxide edges of these circle contact lenses. In addition, there is a theoretical risk of burns to the eyeball because of the metal content. Colored contact lenses are another popular cosmetic trend, but like circle contact lenses, they come with risks while wearing them. In a study done by Hong et al., a woman wore her colored contact lenses to a procedure called IPL, or Intense Pulse Therapy. This is a procedure done to eliminate wrinkles and aging spots. The laser ended up burning through her contact lens, and the colored pigment from the contact lens deposited on the front part of her eye. As a result, her vision became compromised for at least a week. These are some issues that can arise when wearing cosmetic contact lenses. Get these tips and more when you get the bonus edition of the Complete Idiot's Guide to Contact Lenses. So call now for your own copy of the Complete Idiot's Guide to Contact Lenses, now backed by real scientific evidence. And it's only going to be two simple payments of $99.99. And order within the next two minutes, and we'll include a TSA friendly size contact lens solution and case. You can't afford to miss this opportunity, so call now. Don't be an idiot. Call 1 800 eyeballs now. But wait, I'm just getting you information. If you call within the next 10 seconds, we'll include a bonus section of the Complete Idiot's Guide to Contact Lenses, so call now. The Complete Idiot's Guide to Contact Lenses is not for everyone. If you are unmotivated or simply do not care, please talk to your doctor whether the Complete Idiot's Guide to Contact Lenses is right for you. The Complete Idiot's Guide to Contact Lenses does not actually increase level of compliant behaviors. A randomized double-blinded control trial by Clayton et al. showed that there was no significant difference in contact lens care compliance scores between the group that received a basic level of education and the group that received the basic level of education as well as a compliance and enhancement strategy at 12-month appointment.